Thursday, August 8th. Okay, so welcome to the non Lionsgate portal. For those of you kind of confused on why I say that, I am going to recommend that you listen to the Ascension forecast for this week where I went on a Lionsgate portal rant. There is no Lionsgate portal, okay? Yes, it is the eighth day of the eighth month, but we know our calendar is actually false as well. So if you want to believe in the numerological significance of the day, you go right ahead. The Lionsgate portal actually took place back in cancer season when we aligned with the star Sirius. That was supposed to be the whole Lion's Gate vibe. And again, Regularis is over there in Virgo energy, so we're not hitting that particular interaction, that particular alignment until we move into Virgo season. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, not trying to be a negative Nancy, but I am trying to be a realist. And this whole spiritual new age woo woo community has got us all delusional. We have to stick to the truth. We have to stick to what is in front of us. Now, granted, there is a lot of power in numbers. So if you get the majority focused on a very high vibrational day, a very interesting, let's call it gateway to manifesting, then of course we are definitely going to, again, hive mind a particular vibration, a particular frequency. But when we're talking about the actual meat and potatoes of what the Lionsgate portal is supposed to be, this ain't it. That being said, we are still kind of dealing with, uh, I'm going to say a magical pivot point, a magical time, because of course we're in Leo season. We're in the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We just had the new moon in Leo pop off that provided us with a pivot point where our heart, our soul is now taking the lead where we're detaching from the old, from the past. We are anchoring further and further into this new version of self, acknowledging new wants, new needs, new desires, new mission, new purpose, new calling. And that in itself is all of the power we need. We are tapping into our creator abilities each and every single day. We are building in this new version of self and we are doing the work to emotionally refine the heaviness, the weight, the pain, the trauma. We're allowing ourselves to sit in this funk in order for us to acknowledge what needs to stay, what needs to go, who and what are going to be a part of our futuristic vision, goal and dream and who and what is not. That is the whole energy. That is the focus. That is the mission. That is the purpose. So we do have the moon in Virgo energy as we've had for the last couple of days, finally going void, of course, at 441 AM Eastern Standard Time. We are shifting into Libra energy at 532 AM Eastern Standard Time. Let's talk about this particular transition. Anytime that we are moving out of Virgo energy into Libra energy, it is always felt, it is always noticeable. Why? Well, because the Virgo energy is an earth sign. Libra energy is an air sign. We are very caught up in our physical body, in our physical circumstances, in the physical realm, in an earth sign such as Virgo, especially because Mercury, who rules over that Virgo energy, is in his rulership in Virgo energy. However, he is retrograde. Now, there's a lot of power there. We've had a lot of conjunctions building this week, setting us up for this Libra energy. Why? Because the Libra energy helps us to achieve peace and harmony and balance within ourselves, within our relationship dynamics, within our realm and reality once again. Now, typically speaking, the Libra energy pulls us up into the headspace, out of the physical form, up into the headspace. We have to take stock, if you will. The Libra energy can see both sides of the coin. We did a lot of identifying the problems, the obstacles, the challenges with the moon in Virgo, because that's what the moon in Virgo is supposed to do. We have to identify what isn't working in order for us to fix it, to heal it, to repair it. The Libra energy says, okay, now we know what needs to stay, needs to go. We can see both sides of the coin. We can now start negotiating and compromising, not only between our heart and our head in order for us to find a new balance point, a new grounding point, but negotiate and compromise with the people with the world around us. We are relationship focused in this Libra and energy, but mostly focused on the relationship that we're building within ourselves. Why? 
because this new version of self has just come out to play. We are anchoring this new version of self in slowly but surely. The relationship dynamic that we have with ourselves sets the tone with all of the other relationship dynamics that we choose to have outside of ourselves. Anyone that you have an interaction with, that you have a connection with, that you have a relation with is acting as a mirror, showing you parts within yourself, the good, the bad, the ugly. We have to do the work in order to eliminate that darkness, not remove it, not kind of sequester it, not push it off into the fringes. Instead, we have to integrate it. We have to love it. We have to accept it. We have to make it a part of us, our being, our wholeness, in order for us to be operating in our 100% power. Now, the moon in Libra, typically speaking, we find peace and harmony and balance and acceptance within ourselves, within the world around us through exploring the extremes. Now, we just had some realizations with the moon in Virgo on the problematic areas, what we could do different, where we have to be better. The Libra energy is going to help, again, try to balance those scales within. But the scales are definitely going to be out of whack in certain areas of our lives in order for us to figure out how we can achieve that balance, how we can restore homeostasis, peace, harmony, acceptance, not only between our heart and our head, but with us and the world around us. So very interesting here today that today is a moon day. We have six different aspects popping off. All six are going to involve the moon. This is the first of two back-to-back -back moon days. We have another one coming at us here on Friday. So this tells me that we have had a major pivot point, like I said, marked by that new moon in Leo energy. We have these conjunctions between the moon, Mercury, and Venus that have already all taken place under this Virgo energy. And that is putting us in a, let's call it analyzing, reevaluation mode. Now, again, with the moon in Libra energy, we are going to tip the scales in our favor, tweak it back and forth, just like you do when you get on one of those old scales where you have to, you know, tap the weights into perfect balance in order to actually capture how much you weigh. This is very much setting the scene on establishing a new grounding point within our emotional realm. So all of that being said, we have the moon still in Virgo energy, but this is going to be the last aspect that the moon in Virgo is going to make, which means that we should know that it's going to be in opposition with Neptune. Why do why should we know that you may ask? Well, first of all, as we've been exploring any planets, any luminaries getting to the 29 critical karmic degree is going to have some sort of interaction with Neptune because Neptune is in his rulership in this Pisces energy and he is retrograde at the 29th critical crisis degree. We should know that it's an opposition because Virgo energy and Pisces energy sit across from each other in the Zodiac wheel. They represent the axis of healing. The Virgo energy focused on the physical realm, the physical body, the mental plane. The Pisces energy focused on our emotions, our spiritual karmic disposition. So we are definitely trying to strike a balance here between one foot in reality, one foot in la la land, one foot in this physical realm, one foot in the spiritual realm. We need to find that balance. But of course, the moon directly opposing Neptune, it doesn't feel good. It's not supposed to. What it's going to do is stir up all kinds of questions, all kinds of confusions, all kinds of distracting topics and themes in order to keep us away from our current mission. Our current mission is to simply be, to observe, to analyze, but we're going to get caught up with a lot of fears, a lot of doubts, a lot of insecurities, a lot of questions. And we are going to essentially put ourselves in a state of confusion, a state of anxiety that none of us have any business actually being in. 4.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon is going to go void, of course. This means that things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable. Definitely playing off of the confusion that is getting stirred with this opposition to Neptune. We lock into the Libra energy, 5.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
exactly one hour later, the moon in Libra is going to trine, beautiful interaction, with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in this Aquarius energy, trying to highlight for us the power struggle. What power struggle, you may ask? Well, it starts within us, between the old version of self, the new version of self, our ego self versus our higher self. And then it kind of expands to the power struggles that we're having in our own physical realm. The problem, the power struggle that we're having, detaching from the old, detaching from the past, and essentially starting to focus our energy on the future and the power struggles that we ourselves are involved with, with certain relationship dynamics, even where the greater, grander structures of society are concerned. I don't think I have to go too into that to realize where the power struggles between these small groups of people and the rest of the collective is concerned. Because Pluto is trying to change, is trying to transform into something better, something more in power, something more in control. And in the Aquarius energy, this has everything to do with kind of thinking outside of the box, rebelling against those old structures, has everything to do with improving, being better in order for us to kind of align with who it is that we have to be in order to manifest the situation, the circumstance, the scenario that our goals or dreams are now made out of. So the moon, of course, emotionally speaking, trining, which is a gentle nudge in the right direction, we're feeling bossed up. We're feeling like we are in power. We are understanding where it is that we have to be aware of ourselves from a new level of acting as the observer, especially where our interactions with the world, with the people around us are concerned. We are starting to understand that we need to be so committed to our futuristic wants, needs, and desires that it trumps the attachments that we're having to the past. This is going to play a very important part here very shortly because we are going to have an interaction with the south and north node. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but this is setting the stage on us realizing that we have a whole bunch of power right now to boss up into a new level of emotional and mental awareness and how our power, how our words, how our exchanges have a certain pull now more than ever. Again, Mercury is retrograde in his rulership in Virgo energy. That is an earth sign giving our words, our thoughts, our ideas, our interactions a lot more weight. We'll talk about that in just a second. The moon is then going to semi-square the sun. So, of course, the sun shining a bright light in this Leo energy, trying to get us to the heart, to the soul of the matter, trying to show us where it is that we need to be bold and brave and courageous to do the hard things that just happen to be the right things in order for us to actually pursue a path of new happiness, new wants, new needs, new desires. The moon, though, in this Libra energy, again, trying to stay in the shallow end of the emotion because we don't want to go into the depths until we get into that Scorpio energy. The moon and the sun coming together in any type of interaction is going to reveal an emotional awareness, an aha moment, a new level of clarity, a new level of insight. This one just happens to come out of not so nice thoughts, not so nice feelings. Why? Because this is a semi-square. A semi-square is showing where it is that we're having a hard time letting go of the old and we're having a hard time pivoting towards pursuing the new. Out of this, we are going to start realizing that a lot of our attachments to the old is because we're afraid of pe what people may think, what they may say about us, quote unquote, abandoning what we thought we once wanted in order to pivot and pursue something new. The moon in this Libra energy, then going to make a positive interaction with Mercury, who again is in his rulership in the Virgo energy, but he's retrograde, meaning we are not as sharp. We are not as with it as we would like to think that we are. We're operating from our unconscious level of our brain, of our psyche, of our conditioning, of our programming. The moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. We are on the same page of trying to dissect, trying to analyze, trying to reevaluate what needs to stay, what needs to go in order to tip the scales in our favor. 
a lot of this is going to be about communication. And as you know, with Mercury's retrograde, communication is not our strong point. However, the chatty Cathiness of Libra energy, who just likes to be that social butterfly, who likes to mediate and counsel and compromise, negotiate, all of these energies are coming in to show us where it is that our words carry more power now than ever. We're reanalyzing the words that we've already spoken, the words that we've already shared in order to speak our truth, in order to implement boundaries. We're analyzing that. We're trying to figure out whether we still stand by it. We're trying to figure out whether or not we need to tweak that, whether we need to backpedal on that, or whether we're going to double down and actually commit to the words which we've already allowed to leave our mouths. When it comes to ideas, again, our ideas, our thoughts carry more weight now than ever. The Virgo energy wants to anchor them into this physical realm, wants us to be the I'm going to say happiest and healthiest, most pure version of our truth that we could possibly be at this particular juncture. And emotionally speaking, again, we're trying to figure out what else needs to be said, what else needs to be thoroughly communicated in order to get those scales back into balance. The moon then going to make a positive interaction with Venus. Venus rules over the Libra in energy, so there's going to be a little bit of an intensity here. Venus is in Virgo energy, again, kind of taking a more business type of approach to her affections, to her emotions, to her wants or needs or desires. Our heart space is showing us where it is that, yep, yeah, we do have the ability to kind of make some tweaks, make some adjustments to what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire, what's going to make us feel happy, what's going to make us feel safe and secure. We need to make some adjustments, especially where some very important relationship dynamics are concerned. Venus is all about her relationships and her money matters. The Libra in energy wants to achieve peace, harmony, and balance. This, emotionally speaking, is going to illuminate for us who and what, again, needs to be tweaked, needs to be adjusted, and in some cases needs to be let go of in order to get those scales back into balance. Now, the last aspect that we have taking place here today, it's 9.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon in Libra energy is going to sit across from directly oppose the north node in Aries energy, which means that the moon is sitting on top of the south node in Libra energy. Let's unpack. First of all, the north node is in Aries energy trying to get us on the right path to be, be more independent. We have to go on a solo quest. We have to spend time in solitude in order to truly get to know thyself, in order to be able to kind of describe or identify who it is that we are without the influence, the coercion of other people around us. That North Node is trying to push us onto a brand new path into a brand new territory. The South Node in Libra energy is what we've already mastered, what we've already explored, what we've already experienced. And that, my friends, is codependent relationships. That, my friends, is dimming our own light in order to make the people around us feel a little bit more special. That, my friends, is the Libra and energy people pleasing to the utmost degree in order to be loved and accepted by the people by the world around us. We're done with that. We need to put that behind us. However, when the moon, emotionally speaking, hits this south node, the natural pull, if you will, is the fall back on those that we just fought very hard to create boundaries, space, time, energy from. We want to fall back to what is tried, tested, and true. We want to go back to when it was quote unquote easy, even though it wasn't comfortable, even though we weren't standing in our power, even though we weren't our best selves. It required less of us than this new path, this new version of self, this new identity does. And so at the expense of all the work that we've done, at the expense of anchoring in this new version of self at the expense of this new self worth, this self esteem, the self confidence that we've been building at the expense of all that, are you going to go back to the old relationship di dynamics to that old version of self? Are you going back? The answer, my friend is hell no. We're only looking forward. 
We have to remember how strong we are. We have to pivot and look back only to remind us how far we've come, how strong we've had to be, how brave, how courageous we actually had to be to break free of that particular construct. It is going to be a not so nice feeling. You are going to feel torn. You are going to feel indecisive. You are going to feel the inner tug of war between your heart and head, between the past and the future. But we are in the stage of the game right now where you have to be more committed to your future than you ever have been to the attachments, to the people, to the places, to the things of the past.